Hello and welcome inside the Farmers Union pregame show. As always, I'm Ken Oda. Kobe Brault jumping in alongside again. Toros get a big win last night. Pretty dominating performance from start to finish. Yeah, pretty solid performance front to back from the Toros, out shooting the wings 40 to 20 in a dominating 4 to 1 victory. And it was it was from the first period on. Weston Knox gets the scoring started, and then they didn't really look back after that. It was like you said. Very, very dominating performance start to finish. I really wanted to highlight the second period. I feel like the second period is really where they separated themselves in the game. It was a pretty clean game yeah. overall, but that second period, I was shooting them 12-3 to three and, and getting two goals. Zwecky gets on the board his 12th of the year, and then Colby Bear adds his seventh. And you got to highlight that second period. It's one of the better periods that we've seen from the Toros all season. Yeah, I, th I agree. I thought it was a dominating effort. I also thought it was huge that Zwecky was able to break through his as well because as well as the Toros played for the first half of the period it was still a one goal game you know 30 minutes gone but getting Zwecky's goal at about the 11 minute mark of that period really changed it it made it at least feel like the domination was was going somewhere right it doesn't matter how much you're out playing them if it's still a one goal game it's just one mistake and suddenly it's a tie game so I thought getting Zwecky's goal was huge and then Bearsy's insurance marker was was big as well. Yeah, and, and you see that kind of a reoccurring theme with Aberdeen throughout the season. There's a lot of games that you could look back on, a lot of box scores where they get outshot almost 2-1 to one as they did last night, but they find a way to at least get it to overtime or get the win due to goalie play or, you know, just weathering those storms. And so, like you said, for Zwecky to get that second one, that kind of took the air out of any comeback hopes for them. They did get that, that one goal in the third, but then it was Will Dawson quickly restoring that, that uh, three-goal lead. So... Just a really solid performance from the Toros. Um, not really much to complain about if you're a Toros fan. And, you know, that magic number starts creeping down further and further as um, Bismarck stays hot, taking care of North Iowa. Um, that was an absolute drubbing. And then uh, Austin in a 1-0 victory over St. Cloud. They jump into fourth now in that very tight 3-4-5 spot that we referenced yesterday. Well, since you've taken us there, let's take a look at the updated Toros Tribune Central Division standings. And Toros still atop the division, 71 points now with the two last night to become just the uh, the first team in the Central and the third team overall to hit the 70-point mark in the league. Bismarck stays six points back with their win. Aberdeen drops to 16 points back. Austin's 18 and St. Cloud 19 points back. So some definite separation. You, you talk about the Toros' magic number. Not only is it creeping down overall, but for clinching home ice advantage in the first round is also creeping down as you start to get to a point where even if Aberdeen were to win out, they've got 11 games, 22 points left. They're 16 points back, so that means the Toros need only seven points to ensure that Aberdeen can't catch them. Yeah, and it's worth noting, talking about Aberdeen, 11 games left. They have four left against North Iowa, but also four left against Bismarck. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of what the strategy is from not only the Toros, but also Bismarck. Once that, that playoff spot gets locked up, do you go for it? Do you try to keep that two seed or do you go for that one seed? It'll really depend on health and, and how the next few weeks shape out. But Aberdeen, if they're not careful, they could find themselves on the outside looking in. You know, North Iowa for four is great because North Iowa hasn't been very one, good as a play. All year, yeah. You're right. But at the same time, having four against Bismarck, if they are going for that one seed, that could cause an issue for Aberdeen. So it'll be really, really interesting to see how that three, four, five shakes out down the stretch. But like you said, the easiest way for the, uh, the Toros magic number to go down to zero is just to, to keep winning. And I think if you're Aberdeen, you take some solace in the fact that I think Austin and St. Cloud play each other a bit, so it's going to be hard for both of them to continue to get points to chase down the wings. But that'll bring us to our Noodles numbers, a look at the updated numbers after last night's Toro's victory. Toro's goal differential continues to spread out. 3.44 goals per game, now just 2.10 after allowing just one last night. The wings, those numbers get a little bit closer together. Goals per game down to 3.14, goals against at 2.96. So, again, a little bit closer spread for them. Power play and penalty kill rankings don't change much after last night. Toro is still atop the league with their penalty kill. Yeah, and another, another power play goal for the Toros last night, and Wings go 0 for 2. It was a pretty clean game in total. A um, couple 4 on 4 opportunities both ways, but just the, the two penalties that they had to kill. So, pretty solid. 
effort front to back, like we said, not much to complain about. And that, that goal differential is just staggering for the Toros, plus 59 on the year. I mean, that's you're the, the Toro historian, Ken, but that's got to be got to be towards it's the gotta top. It's got to be near the top. Yeah, I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but even some of the years where the Toros were better, I don't remember a team being as dominant during the regular season. And actually, I forgot to update that. It's the last few games, Toros goal differential now up to uh, plus 64. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember a Toros group that's won as many big games as, as this one has. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's the thing. Last night, and, and it's a reoccurring theme when, when you talk about the solid wins that the Toros have had throughout the season. It's that second period, all of a sudden the, the air is taken out of any comeback hope, and then the third period, they kind of coast. And we've seen that time and time again. Like you said, not too many one-goal games. We've had our fair share of you know comeback victories, a couple shootouts here and there. But when, when they win like they won last night, they, they look like one of the better teams in the league. No, I, I've talked about the, the importance of Zwecki's goal and sort of taking the pressure off the Toros, but also Bears, Bearsy's goal last night, making it 3-0 going into the third period, as dominating as that second period was, where the Toros outshot the Wings 12-3. to they're now going in the wing from a wings perspective. You're going into a third period down three, having only gotten three shots on goal in the last period. It does make the, the hill seem that much steeper. So, a, uh, again, an overall dominating effort for the Toros last night. But uh, that'll bring us to our Minotauros Booster Club players to watch. I'll kick this one off. I'm going with uh, another Chicago kid, John Small. I thought he played a real, real good game last night. He had the fantastic pass on Zwecky's goal. Uh, seven shots himself on the night, the assist on Zwecky's goal, as I mentioned, and overall in the season, three goals, two assists against the Wings through 11 meetings. Yeah, Small was everywhere last night, and for me, I'm going Adam Mahler. I know we highlighted him last week, but he had five shots last night as well as an assist. He's also playing his, in his 100th game as a Toro tonight, so I'm looking for that to be a little bit of extra boost. His family's in the house tonight, so look for Adam Mahler to have a, have a big game in his, in his 100th as a Toro. Yeah, Adam Mahler's kind of the, the quiet defenseman for the Toros, right? Weston Knox as a captain and just his, his hair, on style, or hair on fire style gets a lot of attention. Of course, Colby Wook's got the woogie axe over in section 115 that, that make noise whenever he touches the puck, but... Uh, Adam Mahler has been just steady and quiet for now almost two full years on that back end. Congrats to him on his 100th game. Yeah, and, and it's interesting, Ken, because you say quiet in reference to Adam Mahler. Most people, if you meet him off the ice, don't really think that that's the case. But yeah, on the ice, just that steady presence, like you said last week when you highlighted him, just a solid, solid back end piece for coach and somebody that the Toros rely on and will continue to rely on as they, as they make the push towards the playoffs. That'll bring us to our home key group's keys to the game. Kobe, I'll let you kick this one off. Yeah, for me, it's eyes on the prize. Like we said earlier, magic number down to six, and the easiest way to get that all the way down to zero is to keep winning, especially at home. You want to finish this home stand strong. You know, we got tonight, and then Tuesday we got Bismarck coming to town. So you want to finish this, this home stand on a high note, and, you know, it's, it's no, there's no easier place to play than the Pepsi on a Friday or Saturday. So for me, eyes on the prize, like I said, get that magic number down to zero as fast as possible and then kind of evaluate, you know, how the rest of the division's looking as we, as we get down the stretch here. For sure. If the Toros keep winning on their own, regardless of what else happens, the latest they would clinch is next week, Friday. Even if the Toros don't win all their next three games, you get some help uh, with St. Cloud losses and they could still wrap it up. So um, I would think absolute worst case scenario next week Saturday would be the the absolute latest the Toros would clinch but the earliest they could clinch is actually Tuesday night here when Bismarck comes to town and uh, my home key group key to the game is more of the same last night's game was a dominating effort we talked about it plenty so far on the Farmers Union pregame show shots 40 to 20 goals 4 to 1 you know shots on goal in the second 12 to 3 there's really no way you can look at last night's game and be disappointed from a Toros fan, whatever segment you take of the game, even you know, first period or third period shots, that third period while Aberdeen's trying to come back, the Toros outshot them 18 to nine. Uh, that's, a, that's a strong way to put a game away, right? So there's, there's no really bad way to look at last night's contest from a Toros perspective. So just keep doing what they're doing. Absolutely, and, and building off that momentum from last Saturday night, get that win Friday. Three wins is a win streak, and, and it's been a while since the Toros have had a win streak. A lot of splits, which 
we referenced yesterday as as their quote unquote slump. Yeah. But you know, get a win streak going, especially if you can get past Bismarck Tuesday and then have have two down in North Iowa. Um, you know, the, the sky's the limit definitely there for sure. Yeah, suddenly three in a row turns into six in a row pretty quickly. Yep. If you can take care of business tonight and on Tuesday. That'll bring us to our four bears, Casino and Lodge, Toros, Over, Unders. You can play these in the Toros Hockey mobile app on Apple or Android. Kobe, I'll let you play along. As always, total Toros goals. We set it at three and a half. They had four yesterday. I'm going to go with the over here. I also want to point out, I th- I'm pretty sure I'll have to review the tapes, but I'm pretty sure I was three for three yesterday. So you should probably go against me on every single one of these picks, um, knowing how this has worked all season. But I'm going over tonight. I think that it's going to be another dominating performance from the Toros, and I think that they might end up getting five or six when it's all said and done. Total Toros shot differential last night. Toros doubled up the wings 40 to 20 on shots, giving them a little bit of credit tonight, saying 5.5. Yeah, I'm going to take the over there. I feel like that's a pretty safe bet. Just looking at um, what we referenced yesterday, they outshot their opponents by an average of eight shots throughout the entire month of February. Much more of the same last night, so I'm going to take the over on that one as well. And then total fighting majors called. Will we see some guys drop the gloves? Uh, yes, I will. I'm going to take the over on that one as well. I'm going all three overs. I think that Aberdeen, you know, desperate for that three seed, as we referenced yesterday, seemed kind of out of it from the beginning. Like we said, the, the wind taken out of their sails in the second period last night. I expect them to come out swinging tonight, both literally and figuratively. And that'll bring us to the McDonald's Toros trivia question, a chance to get a free lunch from our friends at Dakota Drive McDonald's. Get your guesses in in the Toros Hockey mobile app. Who is the only Toro goaltender to shut out the wings in his first start against them? Brandon Wildung, Eric Dopp, Gunnar Rivers, or Lucas Sweden? I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Gunnar Rivers. No, no facts to back that. Again, just when a, in just doubt, just, guess, just yeah. guess C. So I'm going Gunnar Rivers on that one. Um, so again... Guess on your own, get your own guests in, and you can win a a nice meal from our friends at at McDonald's. That'll do it for the Farmers Union pregame show. We'll turn you over to Josh Carlock. It's nice introduction.